This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. The Revolution with Juan McCartney is sponsored by J.S. Johnson, Burger King, Commonwealth Bank, Ron's Electric Motors, Y Cares Fashion Center, the Deposit Insurance Corporation, and Wendy's. Good afternoon, Bahamas, and welcome to the revolution here on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. My name's Juan McCartney, so good to have you with us. All right, so listen, today's the advance poll, okay? And we're bound by certain regulations um, of IRCA in what we can and cannot discuss. Don't get mad at me, as y'all love to do, and ask me why the hell things are the way they are. I didn't make it this way. I had nothing to do with it. But it is what it is, all right? And I'm going to explain to you where we're at, all right? IRCA, code of practice, 6.7. Prohibitions on polling day. Licensees shall not be permitted to broadcast within any programs the following to the public on any polling day until after the close of the poll. A, discussion and analysis of election and referendum issues. The result of purported result of the voting in a constituency or electoral district before the close of all the polling stations. The results of any opinion poll. Any political advertisement, political broadcast, or any other election programming produced by or on behalf of a candidate, political party, or other person or entity. All right, so nothing. We can discuss nothing, nothing, so you can't even have a discussion (laughs) about the election. So nothing about the election we can discuss, okay? So... Let's just be guided by that. Now, I definitely want to get into some of the fiscal snapshot stuff and other stuff like that, but there's other interesting things we could talk about, too. Not a problem. We may, however, find that we have a difficulty in properly navigating the fiscal snapshot because a lot of it is undergirded by, like, the policies that the administration put in place, Um, much of them um, politically driven. So it's difficult, but... We're going to make it happen. I'm down to talk about whatever you want to talk about. Levin, I heard, was playing uh, Negro Spirituals. Why do y'all message me like when Levin's talking? I, 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 or, 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 or Aaron. That ain't, that ain't, that ain't got nothing to do with me in terms of my show. Also, some of y'all have to stop. I'm going to try to say this without talking about the election. Why are y'all mess? Who first, who gave you people my number? Uh, half of you are messaging me. I do not know. All right. Maybe you're nice people. Maybe not. I got to run background checks on folk nowadays. Why are you messaging me 11 o'clock at night about election issues? Why are you messaging me 6 o'clock in the morning about election issues? Who gave you my number? What do you think I'm waiting to hear from you or discuss it? Like I got this, I, I'm itching to like have a show beyond the show. I'm not. I'm trying to squeeze my woman. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Trying to eat my breakfast. Talk about no election. How would look? I don't care. I don't care. All right. I don't care who wins the election. Not even a little bit. All right. Please, please, relax yourself. I know a lot of y'all identity and livelihood. And feelings tied up in this thing, but I can't help you with none of that. All right? 
just so we're all clear. I feel good today. Like, I feel like, I feel like money coming. You ever feel like, you ever feel that way? Like, you know, make some money? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I feel that way. I just feel like money's coming. I, I, I don't know. It's, that's all. Money coming. What's the song? Lawrence Rowe? So what you be trying to do is squeeze my woman, right? I got his phone and it buzzes, buzzes, and I have an iWatch now and I don't know how to take my notifications off my iWatch. So it buzzes every three seconds with people messaging me. Wanting some like personal analysis of <laughs> the election. Stop it. This is my fault. Years ago, I gave him my number and I stopped doing it because I was getting a lot of weirdness. And then I mistakenly, and I was must be, uh, a swirling uh, sense of grief perhaps caught me slipping, and I gave up my number when I was broadcasting from my house when my mom died. That was a mistake. You can call me, though. Call me now. Call me now. Message me now. How's that? Anyone on earth who wants to message me, message me now. We can't talk about the election, but feel free to do so. And now you can call me. 323-6232-325-4316. Three two five four two five nine. I really feel like I'm like someone's got some money for me. I don't know why. I feel like someone's just gonna bless me. Something, something's popping. You ever get that feeling? Yeah. Uh, sure. Good afternoon. Welcome to the revolution. Hey. Good afternoon, Juan. Hey. Man, today is a good ghost story day, man. <laughs> ghost stories. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I was just reading, and I, d I don't know if I want to go through it because it may be sensitive, but I was just uh, going back. I was reading this blog called Bahamianology.com, and they have uh, about serial killers, right? And Bahamian serial killers. And there's one I want to talk about, uh, the most infamous serial killing that we had um, besides Cordell Farrington. And I wanted to talk about Cordell Farrington, but it, even though that was a while back, that might still be too fresh for, for the families of the victims, you know? And you know how to do a good story, man. Go ahead. Go for gold. All right. We're going to talk about it. Thanks, my brother. All right. uh, good afternoon. Welcome to the revolution. Hello. Good, good afternoon. Are you there? Good afternoon, Juan. How you doing, man? <laughs> I'm good. How's it going? I'm good. Listen, let me just say this off the bat. I am not one of the people who is messaging you at 6 a.m. when you find to squeeze your woman. Okay, right? good. Great. I, I am a firm I am a firm believer in squeeze any woman 6 a.m., 6 p.m., 6 p.m. Right, good. You do what you got to do. Um, no, just calling to say, um, as we deal with um, this COVID pandemic, man, um, if you noticed, I don't know if you guys have reported it yet, but some new studies came out from the CBC talking about the Delta variant and hospitalization rate vaccinated versus unvaccinated. Really? I didn't, I didn't uh, see that yet. Yep. Yeah. So you're talking about, they're saying that uh, the results are saying that people are 17 times more likely to be hospitalized. Wow. Um, uh, if they're unvaccinated, particularly with this Delta variant. And uh, they're showing that even people who get vaccinated, that once they, um, even with the Delta variant, they have shorter times of illness, which means there's a shorter viral load, which means they spread the virus for shorter periods of time. Mm -hmm. And then the rates in terms of vaccinated, um, in terms of actually getting the virus, even if you're vaccinated, is one in every 5,000 people. Wow. All right? So I think there's more and more data that are showing us that vaccination, while it's not the only way for us to, no. to get out of this pandemic, Right. It's a clear-cut option to, to help us move on the stuff. And so we're hoping that, you know, people, as as much as is available, will go out and get vaccinated. Um, and, and we can take this this pandemic off the shelf. I, I was speaking at a meeting the other day when someone asked if, if COVID is going to be endemic. Mm. And I, I pointed them back to the, the facts that moved around the polio virus. At one point in time, polio was endemic, absolutely endemic, particularly in the third world. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until it came to the first world and started killing some white people that they right. decided, hey, we need to figure out how we can get a vaccine for this. Right. And we, we, we went through, I mean, Rotary International was a big part of it, and they basically eliminated this endemic virus off the face of the earth in terms of, you know, you still get one or two people who so get polio, but it's not widespread as it was before. So... We can't just look and say, hey, we're going to deliver this and deal with it because I think at the end of the day, 
keep spreading. You're going to keep mutating. You're going to keep getting this, this, this more and more dangerous, more stronger virus that's going to really, really cause more grief and harm and, and strain on us and strain yeah. our health care. You know? Yep, absolutely. And I so, think that a lot of people... Um, there's a poll out, right? And it's not a political yeah. poll, but in terms of they say that a, a fewer than 2% of people uh, trust uh, the prime minister's messaging on the the vaccine, right? 1.4% of people trust the prime minister's messaging on the vaccine. And you might have seen that translating well, particularly during the start of the AstraZeneca. But with yeah. the Pfizer, the vaccine um, uh, uptake is, is shot way, way up. So I think it's it may have been a case of people didn't a lot of people didn't want AstraZeneca and also people are now seeing this Delta variant ain't nothing to play with. Right. Right. Well, let's be clear about something. At the end of the day, um, the the government would have gone with Paho and the WHO and the stuff. But the truth of the matter is that sometimes we have to understand that God has placed the Bahamas in a particular geographical situation for a reason. And when you sit right off the coast of Florida. Your, your entire vaccinatable population is less than half the population of Dade County. Really? And yeah. we know that the Bahamas has a serious influence on the South Florida Chamber of Commerce. We know that. Yes. Okay? Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and so, you know, we, we, we got there late, but we got there. We have to go and get U.S. approved vaccine because that's what, that's what people feel comfortable with. And scientists like me can tell them all they want. No, man, it's AstraZeneca is good. So, so, listen, if you go into Florida and you can't find it, they don't want it. Right. That's just that's family culture. Yep. And, and, and there's this thing in healthcare we talk about that's called social or cultural healthcare, right? You have to understand the people you're talking to. And so you see that um, the, particularly now that the size has been approved, you see that the numbers have shot up, and, and, and that's to be expected. That, that, and we, I think, you know, from our end, Whatever missteps have been made, we move ahead. We do what we have to do. Let's get this out there. Try to get people as as knowledgeable, um, and and sometimes that means using different portals, different messages, different messages. But but the key for us is the data now is clear to us. All right. I mean, I would take those odds one in five thousand in a country of only four hundred thousand. I'm taking those odds every day, all day, and twice on Sunday. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. All right. Yeah, as am I. All the best, my brother. And listen, every once in a while, just take off the watch. <laughs> right. right? Yeah, that's what I'm going to have to do. Off. Listen, once you're in your house, it's you, your wife, and your daughter, right? Uh, my daughter and son. The daughter and son, right? Mm. Okay. Your mommy and gone. Who else you got to worry about calling you? No, you make a Turn the phone off. Yeah. You're good to go. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate All right, it. Brother. That's good advice. You can't rest. Okay. We can talk whatever you want to talk about. We can't talk about the election. All right? We cannot. Listen, if you feel as though you may be vulnerable, you see people around you getting sick, being hospitalized, dying, the obituaries is like a, a book today, right? There's like... They had to print extra sections of the obituary. I'm not saying all these people died of uh, uh, COVID, but uh, uh, quite a number of them did. Okay, so if, if you feel like you're really not safe and you're very concerned, then go speak to your doctor and, and talk about being uh, uh, vaccinated, right? If you don't want it, um, don't worry about it. And you take your take your odds. Me, I'm vaccinated, um, so and I, I gave my reasons for that, and uh, it actually gives me a bit more comfort uh, knowing that I did do that. But then again, I'm I'm aware that if you're vaccinated, you still can uh, get sick, catch COVID, spread COVID. So I'm very cautious. Juan, who you got tonight? Cowboys or Buccaneers? I'm, I got the Bucks. So, you know. Uh, I don't. I don't want to like hurt cowboy fans' feelings. I, I save my like. Uh, I hate for the for the dolphins, but um, it, it's 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 not looking good, uh, Cowboys this season. Not not at all. Also, will dolphins make the playoffs? I think the dolphins 
will make the playoffs this year. So will the Colts. Now, we're in a hardcore uh, division with the AFC, but I think we're going to do good. I think we're at least going to get the what you, AFC South. We're at least going to deal with that. Come out on top of that. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to the revolution. No? Okay. It says, hi, Juan. What do you think about being invited to someone's birthday? I think it gets on them, but only to, told, only to be told you have to pay at the very end. See, you got to be upfront when you tell, when you're doing something like that. You got to have social etiquette now. Now, if I tell you, come to my birthday party at my house, of course, that's on me. I got to be explicit in saying, come out to dinner with me for my birthday. And wh- and then, and why would I pay for you on my birthday just to come out with me? You pay. In fact, you should be paying for me. It's my birthday. That's your birthday present to me. No, you should, they should tell you up front. Good afternoon. Welcome to the revolution. Hey, there. It's Doc. You're in the voice of love with you, Juan. Hey, man. How's it going? Hello? Yeah, hey. Okay. Hey, buddy. Juan, I was to tell you the same thing in which that gentleman told you. Turn off your phone when you're in. Right. I can't. Yeah. Say it again? I, uh, the problem with that is is that my work pays for my phone. They pay my phone bill, and they expect me to be reachable. And you don't know who calling. I mean, I people you. just be messaging me, calling me. I swear to I don't know these people from Adam. I hardly can hear you. I, um, I don't know what else to say. I, I'm speaking as loudly as I can. Maybe you're, something's wrong with your receiver. No. Anyhow. Okay. Uh, I, can, I can hear you a little better now. The thing is, when you home, you made me laugh when you said you need to, when you want to hug your wife and stuff like that. Right, I do. That's a fact. That's truth and fact. And you can't let anything, anything of, uh, uh, deprive you of that situation. That's family. You need to be there. And you want to be there. So that's first priority. Absolutely. Uh, what I want to say also, right? Now, the hospital, I, I've listened to the situation with the Princess Margaret Hospital. That's a sad situation, right? And I don't like how uh, those people are being handled, uh, the people that are dying, you know, also the nurses and doctors and stuff. The thing is, there was a portion of scripture uh, what came to my mind in Proverbs, when good men do nothing, you know, then, um, you know, it, in other words, paraphrasing, it gives room for immaturity as such. Yep, agreed. Yeah, and somebody needs to do something because, I mean, that, that, that's disgraceful. Other thing is, right, my last point before I leave, uh, the courts need to do something. They need to buck up. The thing is, uh, you'll be paying your money uh, to have uh, situations be registered in court, and you got to be paying them uh, to have seven served, right? Mm-hmm. And still, the thing is, when people don't come to court, uh, the magistrate put it in in the uh, uh, in the computer in the in the uh, police station, and the police don't pick up the people, you know, and it's a problem. You know, they need to fix that situation. Got it, definitely. Thanks so much. Uh, you can call me about anything random at all you would like to uh, talk about. All right. Says this Juan McCartney, I heard the host of the show say the Dolphins making the playoffs. We must be going to the Super Bowl. If you weren't bored with us making the playoffs, fins up. I don't, I don't wish for you to make the playoffs. I just am not divorced from reality that y'all don't deserve no Super Bowl. Y'all ain't went since 81. All this money and time y'all have, y'all don't deserve no Super Bowl. Y'all, y'all gotta, no. New stadium. No. Anyway, but if you earn it, you earn it. This says, one, you know what's ironic? Initially, your main reasons why taking the vaccine didn't make sense is because you mentioned that if you still have to wear masks and social distance and if the lockdowns and curfews were still a play, then what sense did it make? To do it, fast forward several months later in Abracadabra, you're vaccinated. And yet the same restrictions are still in effect. In fact, it seems another shot. And one after that are eminent. Yeah, 
Yep, mask and social distance and lockdown still in effect. Still in effect. This says, uh, Juan, you have no one to blame but yourself. You're too popular. Juan, I feel your pain. My wife works in an environment where all hours of the night and her phone is always ringing all hours of the night. I had to, in fact, I had to cut the, cut, it, cut it off at a certain point. So at a certain point at night, I, I don't answer my phone. Like people who need, to, unless it's a very small set of people, right? Or answer any messages. So particularly after 11 for certain, right? So when I was – when we first started doing television news and I was doing television news a lot, we – I would be covering crime uh, when major crimes happen more often than not. And so this was like during Ingram's last term when they started setting murder record after record, right? And uh, 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning wouldn't be no thing. I'd get up and go, right? But then I got married and I still would get up and go. Then I had a, a, a child, right? And I was like, you know what? Let somebody else be the guy, right? And so I told them, don't call me. I'm not going. If it doesn't get covered, it doesn't get covered. I'm going to carve out some sort of piece for myself other than my life being all about news and murder, 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 kill, 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 right? So I guess like Jared maybe is the guy now. Or about Lee Jared track downs the families of murder victims. He's become an expert at that. Good afternoon. Welcome to the revolution. Hi, Juan. How are you? I'm great. How's it going? Good, good. This is North Carolina calling. Hey, North Carolina. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so I wanted to ask a question. Um, and I know you, you know you can't talk anything um, political. About, yeah. Yeah, political. But can I ask a question in terms of? Okay, so I. I lived in, in um, I moved from the Bahamas from 2014. So I've been here from 2014. Um, I still have my purple card. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just found it the other day. Um, I know I can't vote. Right. Right? So that, that's not that. Right. But, you know, and some, some Bahamas might even be in the same predicament that I am in because I can't vote here in the United States and I can't vote in the Bahamas because, you know, I've been here for seven, what, seven, going on seven years, I guess. Yeah, no, so no, they won't I let you vote. I wanted to find out if you've, you've heard about anybody who have been in the same sort of situation that I am. I am in. Where you've been gone, but you can't vote? Yeah, because they told once you have to be residing. Yeah, you have to be ordinary like, resident. Yeah, I know I know dozens of people who who are, bah- oh. who are Bahamians, who still have Bahamian citizenship, who live abroad, who want to vote but can't. Um, yeah. I the issue with that is we don't have like a federalized system of elections where it all goes into one pool. And so how would you determine which constituency that y- that you are in? But my house still is my apartment still is in Bacardi Road. Hmm. So, you know, I still have I still have a house apartment in Bacardi Road. I think so, if you still have property in the Bahamas, you should be able to vote. And vote oh, where I didn't know that. I, no, I'm not saying you can. I'm saying you should be able to. That's my opinion. Oh, okay, no, no. Yeah, but no, there's no way for you to vote. I mean, I didn't. I didn't do any of that because I didn't want what happened the last time, you know, where persons, they had to recall them because they were, you know, either they didn't do it right or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm, yeah. But I just looked at my purple card, you know, voter's card the other day. Um, it has my, you know, my, my ex-husband's name on it, but, you know. Oh, I got you. Back to my maiden name, but, you know, I could still provide documents to show, you know. Right. Or, yeah. You know, they won't let you vote, though. Not unless you come here. I no, think no, it, yeah. I know. I'm not, I'm not trying to. I just was saying, you know, like you said, it was just a conversation. Right, yeah. If anybody else was, like, in that same sort of predicament. Yeah, lots of people. Like, my sister you know, is in so, Texas, and she, you know, she can't, she can't vote. She wants to, she wants to be able to still participate. So yeah. it's it's a it's a it's a it's a lot of people like that who who yeah. cannot who want to but cannot you know yeah but I I wanted to say too I I loved all of those songs I wouldn't say the songs but they were you know all the songs they brought back memories too yeah absolutely <laughs> playing them and I guess what everybody even you know up to everybody on this show on the different shows were playing different songs so like it brought back sort of that memory. I was never the rah rah going out to thing, but I used to like to watch it on TV or that sort of thing. So, like you know, um, but you know, it's interesting to see persons who are in my predicament what what they um, 
Um, do. And then also even talking about the um, the vaccine, you know, that's another sore thing with persons, you know, the unvaccinated versus the vaccinated. I heard one of the, um, um, in, in L.A., a physician um, quit a job because they are not accepting, they're not putting any unvaccinated individuals in intensive care. If you were unvaccinated, you were not going to get an intensive care bed. So she wow. quit, you know, I think I saw a documentary on something that, that she did because she quit, you know. So that's another thing, you know, the conversation of vaccinated versus unvaccinated. You know, I always keep saying to the end of the day, person's personal choice. You know, you have to live with, you know, what you do, if you're vaccinated or not, you know. So Absolutely. Absolutely. But I'll be listening. From Thanks for calling North from North Carolina. Carolina. I, I appreciate it. I work from home all the time, so. I listen all the time at all the shows from Dwight in the morning until Nahaja in the afternoon. <laughs> so really? It's just like my company and keeping up with the things that's happening in the Bahamas. I love it, you know, and I watch the news all the time. So yeah. Excellent. Well, thanks but for calling. Continue and to do well and um, continue to do well with your show. And I say thank you guys. It was such a great job. Thanks a million. We're going to have uh, we're going to have great coverage for you uh, tomorrow and other pl- other t- other uh Days leading up to the election and after the election, so you can feel like you're right here at home, right? You won't miss a beat, okay? Now, I'm supposed to do my... You're asking me what my NFL picks are. I haven't done my picks yet. I'm in the pool this year. I came fourth last year, but I'm trying to beat that this year. So let's do, let's, let's do some picks. I don't know if we'll do all of them. Okay, where's the schedule? Who do I like? Who do I like? All right, so tonight we're going with the Bucks, right? It's uh, it's just not happening, Cowboys. Don't uh, don't worry about it. So, uh, tonight we're going with the Buccaneers. Wouldn't surprise me if they go back to the Super Bowl. All right, Sunday we got the Colts and Seahawks. We're going with the Colts, Kermy. Yeah. Okay. Sunday, Colts. Uh, we got um, also the. Why isn't this popping up? There we go. All right, we got the Bills and the Steelers. We're going to go with the Bills. All right, we're going to go with the Bills. Got the Titans and the Cardinals. That's going to be a good game, actually. We're going to go with the Titans. Patriots and Dolphins. This hurts me, but we're going to pick the Dolphins. I got to pick smart. There's money involved. (laughs) You like that, eh? There's money involved. I can't take person. I can't take it personal. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to the revolution. How goes it? How's it going? I'm good. Well, boy, you sound good. You sound good. Listen, is, is it possible? Because I remember um, when I got my license to operate my ham radio many, many years ago. Mm-hmm. They, they used to call themselves uh, the Public Utilities Commission. Yeah, they had a public. Well, they disbanded the Public Utilities Commission and turned it into IRCA. Yeah. Well, okay, and they limit me to uh, DX. With only 250 watts minimum. At that time, you could get away with it because the bandwidth and the waves were not all that crowded. But as it relates to you all having discussions about political views during this season, uh, particularly during election day, has has anybody gathered together to contest that garbage? Uh, no, you know we've never actually formally protested it. I'm not even yeah protest sure. protest protest. I'm not That's sure right. there's a formal process to do so. But, yeah, um, because I mean, it's a fair game. You you know, it should be more. It it, it, it this is the time. Agreed. This is the time, and that people would like to be able to uh, you know just express themselves. And but what is the reason for it? That's what I'd like to know for for the banning. They're saying that we could unduly influence people at the polls, so that therefore that they don't want us to to. Possibly so you can't do, do it right up like the day before, but you can do it. Because they're listening to the radio station while they're in the boot? I guess, man. I don't know. You're trying oh, to have me explain foolish, something foolish. I don't understand to you. Well, yeah. I'd like to see how you guys work with that and how you protest that. That's the word. Well, um, I'm going to let somebody else uh, protest about that. Someone else can lead that charge. I'll co-sign. I got a lot going on. All right. Um, it says the Steelers will beat the Bills on Sunday. I don't think so. I don't think so. All right. We got... Uh, Oh, we got to take a break. Let's take a break. All right. We'll be right back. Stay tuned.
Summer is heating up, and Burger King Nassau is bringing the flavor. Introducing our all-new take on a classic chicken sandwich, the Barbecue Swiss Crispy King. Our new sandwich is full of smoky and tangy flavor and features our crispy chicken patty with tangy chipotle sauce, onion rings, bacon, Swiss cheese, lettuce, and tomato, plus a smoky barbecue sauce on a soft potato bun. The new Barbecue Swiss Crispy King Chicken Sandwich with fries and a Pepsi is a summer treat you will love to eat, but only available for a limited time and only at Burger King Nassau, where taste is king. Tired of banks forcing you to use technology to bank the way they want you to? Your convenience is important. So no matter what your banking needs, Commonwealth Bank's friendly staff are always available in branch for that personal one-on-one service. But when you choose technology, our online and mobile banking app offers you state-of-the-art functionality. The choice is yours. Commonwealth Bank. Bank the way you want. If you think you can't afford to dress to impress or replace those utensils or maybe even upgrade your household appliances, then you don't know YCARES Fashion Center. With three locations to serve you, YCARES Fashion Center features the things you need or want all at a price that you can afford. Open Monday through Saturday, 8.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. YCARES Fashion Center also has the island's largest jean collection. Put the fun back in shopping and visit your favorite YCARES location today where you can afford to look good. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Revolution here on Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. My name is Juan McCartney, so good to have you with us. All right. It says, good afternoon. Can Sir, can you give the reasoning behind your show being called The Revolution? Yeah, I can, sure. Uh, people hear The Revolution and they think it's some, like, call for social... Uh, breaking down of all our systems of of government and we could become some sort of socialist republic. That's not what I'm into. And I reserve the right to use whatever name I feel like using for my show. All right? Nobody owns that. So I can call whatever I like. But what I'm talking about is revolutionizing the way we think about and view the world that we live in, the society that we inhabit, the structures of government so that we could better choose people who lead us. We can be better informed. We can have better understanding. So there are many revolutions that have taken place in the world. Some people associate those words with violence and um, tearing stuff down. Uh, I want to tear down the barriers in your mind, right? So I don't know if you have a problem with it or not. You think I'm not revolutionary enough for you. You feel free to go have your own platform and, and speak about whatever revolution you believe uh, you want to see out there. I fully support that. It says, you going with the bills. You forget who cut your cold tip last season when I keep pre-warning you cut it coming after Christmas. Yeah, I'm I'm going with the bills. And also, Colts are looking good. You can't make me feel bad. I'm I'm happy <laughs> with where we are. We're just talking different things today. Zeke about to put up. Uh, say so one, you mean 71. Better call yours. When's the last time Dolphins won the Super Bowl? 71. Wow. What happened in 81? Y'all had a perfect season. Okay. All right. All right. So Zeke about to put up 130 on the ground with two TDs to run all of the bucks tonight. <laughs> Okay. okay. <laughs> if you, I won't make you feel bad about your team, right? But, uh, uh you know, you know that's not going to happen, right? Juan, well, everything was cool till you picked against my Steelers. We're going to beat them Bills on Sunday. You may want to reconsider that Dolphins pick, though. 
if money's on the line, bet on Dollar Bill Belichick. He beats up young QBs all day. I'm going to tell you what. Last season, and it's probably because you're messing with Cam Newton, right? Last season kind of demystified, you know, this Patriot uh, perception that the Patriots are, are, are just dynastic and it don't matter who you put in there and Belichick's system is what it is and any QB could really make it pop. I think we, we, we quashed that notion last year. Good day one. The Steelers will beat the Bills on Sunday. This is one. Just learn how to use your favorite feature on your phone to only allow certain calls through at certain times. I do want to know. I do want to, what I'm going to do. Says, sir, you totally took my question the wrong way. I only wanted to know why the name. Don't be thin skin. Thanks for laying it out. I wasn't trying to be thin skin. So I don't mean to. I didn't mean to be that way. I didn't mean it like that, right? Sometimes people at me, you know. Like I had the one guy in the bank, an African, pan Africanist dude, like curse me in the bank like a lunatic. So maybe I'm touchy about that. I'm sorry. I am going to tell you uh, on the other side of the break about a, a Bahamian serial killer. My wife watches this thing. On Instagram, I always because my wife doesn't believe in the use of, of headphones, right, with her phone. So I'm always like catching what she's checking out. And there's this woman on Instagram who, uh, a white lady, not that it matters if she's white or not, but she tells like every day. Uh, well, I don't know how frequently it is, but there's lots of them because my wife listens to lots of different ones. Every day she comes on, and she is she has her just her face is showing. Right, and her, her neck, and she's got no makeup on, and she's putting on makeup, like f- doing a ton of makeup. And while she's doing it, she's talking about an infamous murder and explaining all the details of the murder while she's putting on the makeup. And I'm, I, I didn't watch her like putting on the makeup, but listening to it uh, in the background, it, it's it's very interesting. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm not gonna be like that, and I'm, I'm certainly not gonna be putting on makeup. But I'm gonna talk to you about a a serial killer. And we'll also do some some picks. Good afternoon. Welcome to the revolution. No, all right. We'll call back three two three six two three two three two five four three one six three two five four two five nine. Says my wife can't turn off her phone. Lives are at stake. Yeah, and that 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 may be it too. You may be a doctor, right? They call you all hours of the night. It says, ooh, these birthday parties where a person is hosting, whether at home or other venue, and then ask people to pay are tacky. If you invite me out, etiquette dictates that you should pay. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I don't know, though. For birthday? I can't afford all of y'all to go, like, to the restaurant. I can't afford all y'all to go to Outback. Now there's anything wrong with Outback. Let alone some of these places y'all want to go. Hi, Juan. Just found out that my tour bus and all taxis and jitneys still have to be licensed for 2020. Why? My tour bus has been sitting since March 2020. Pure nonsense. Yeah, they, they are going to make you pay for last year and this year. This is over the deck. Juan, how much are we going to keep pouring into that black hole called PMH with these upgrade contracts? It's wasted money. Over the decades, we have poured over a billion dollars into that hospital. I don't know if it's been a billion, but maybe. But, um, yeah, I agree. I think we need a, a new hospital. We can still keep PMH, but I think we need a, a new hospital that's functional for our needs in the 21st century. We keep fixing up, fixing up, fixing up. I want, while you're trying to inform and educate, remember that to emancipate ourselves from mental slavery is to not continue to do the same things over and over. Especially the end results are not in your favor. It's called insanity. Only those that benefit from this insanity see no harm in doing the same thing over and over. Revolution. Yep. And there's a... Juan, isn't it refreshing not to hear Anton (laughs) and the rest of those chronic callers today? Uh, when well, we see we saw the new floor of PMH when the media visited there two weeks ago, the wide look ninety percent finish. What they waiting on? A ribbon cutting? We need that open. Yeah, I agree. 
It looks nice, too. And the ambulance, uh, emergency department looked good, too. The facade. A lot of, lot of Duroc going on, but, uh, you know. It says, LOL, these people like 12, they split the check across eight people and pay for the birthday boy girl. You want a goodie bag, too? Hey. <laughs> See, I, I'm not sure of the etiquette because it's, it's touchy. If you, if it's my birthday and you say, let's go out because it's your birthday, right? I'm figuring you're at least doing something, right? Buying some, but my friends, the friends I have, of which I have very few, right? <laughs> Who I actually will meet in person. If they tell me, Let's go out to your birthday. They're buying for your birthday. They're buying. Right? If I tell them, let me take you out for your birthday, I'm buying. It says, great show as usual. Are you willing to bet two chicken patties on the Miami Dolphins making the playoffs? Am I willing to bet two chicken patties that they won't make the playoffs? Or am I willing to bet two chicken patties that they will make the playoffs? Because I'll take I'll I'll bet that they won't make the make the playoffs for two chicken patties, but I'm not. I lie. I I think they're gonna make the playoffs. I'm lying to myself. I do think they're gonna make the playoffs. I think the Dolphins are gonna make the playoffs. <laughs> so, does that make me a Dolphin fan? It does not. It does not. Hey, want to tell your wife to subscribe to Infographics on YouTube. I find myself watching their videos on serial killers. Very good channel. Infographics. That's good. Have you ever, have you ever watched a soft white underbelly? F- find that on YouTube. The YouTube channel soft white underbelly. It like, and I'm not trying to be demeaning here. It's, it speaks. You've seen that? Soft white underbelly. The what? No, 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 it ain't like that. It's just interviews. It's not demonic or anything like that. It's interviews with people who are really at the bottom of society. So people who are, are kind of society throws away. So you'll see interviews with like people, amputees, people who've been like abused, uh, scarred. You see interviews with prostitutes. They inter, they, they will have interviews with drug addicts, right? gang members, people who are like abused in prison, the, this sort of thing, like really it, it's jarring. You don't want to watch too much of it. It says, well, and the only thing you need to do is bring the cake, bro. Stay woke and watch them vultures. <laughs> oh, Lord. This is who are these cheap people who are complaining about having to pay if you invite them to a restaurant to celebrate your birthday? They could consider, they should consider the amount they spend a birthday gift. If I invite someone to celebrate my birthday with me, I'll provide at least a drink or a glass of champagne, but I'm not gonna pay for your meal, cause some of y'all have expensive taste. I can't remember the last time I had a birthday party. <laughs> I go out, I didn't this time. I go out for my birthday with my wife, usually, and I pay. Right? And I'm not mad at that. It's just, I don't need, I don't want my wife to pay. I don't know. Maybe that's just the macho side of me. Day one, the key is this. When you get to the restaurant with a group, the first, first thing to tell the waiter is how to split the check. Cause if you wait until the end of the meal, it only gets confusing and awkward. Uh, listen, when I go out, in a group of people, like say a bunch of us from work were to go somewhere or something like that, which I don't do, but let's just give it a hypothetical. Uh, the first thing I do, the first words out of my mouth when the waiter asks, when the waiter greets me is I'm on a separate check. Right? So we're just, so there's just no confusion because this thing, like we're not in, 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 in sophomore year. All right, of uh, of college, right? This thing where you go through the bill and you try to figure out who had what and all that, it's garbage, all right? Just split the check, pay for your own meal. Now, if you invite me out for my birthday, it's a different thing, all right? 
It says, Juan, I'll stick to the TikTok booty challenges on YouTube. <laughs> no, no soft white underbelly. TikTok booty challenges. Yeah, hell. They'll make you believe in God, eh? Oh, we gotta go to a break? Let's go to a break. We'll be, we'll be back on the other side. At Wendy's, our food is made to make you crave. Crave our all-new Big Bacon Cheddar Burger. This melt-in-your-mouth sandwich is what cheesy bacon dreams are made of. It starts with your choice of fresh, never-frozen beef or a chicken patty topped with American cheese, apple with smoked bacon, bacon jam, onion tanglers, and creamy cheddar cheese spread on an all-toasted cheddar bun. Available for a limited time only. Stop in today for that flavor you crave. Wendy's, different in Inside and out. Wait, you know what's going down tomorrow? Nobody, what happening? Joe bringing these knives to school? He could do Junior you in? For what? Wait, he fooled with Joe Girl? Mother sick. And you know Junior don't bog down for nothing. So that means you got a big fight tomorrow. So whose side you want? Side? I trying to stay in school, not Simpson Pen. You gotta tell somebody about this fight. Tell somebody? I ain't no snitch. I mean, cool, you know. Wait, if you so cool, then you need to stay in school and stay out of the fight. Yeah, but if I don't hang on Joe's side, how many boys coming for me next? All right, so we definitely gotta tell somebody. We gotta prevent the fight. What I say, I don't want nobody call me snitch. We could just call crime. Stop us. You could report what you know, and nobody gotta know it's you. So out of the way. All you gotta do is call them, or you text them through the crack crime Bahamas are, and nobody can know it's you. Then the police come looking for me for more info, and when they finish with them, Joe them coming looking for me? Uh-uh. When you call Crime Stoppers, the calls go directly to Miami, and they don't ask nothing about you. Then you can get the pen from them, and you can claim a reward later using that same pen. Plus, everything scrambled, so nobody can read what you said. Calls reach away 8477 from Nassau, or 242 from the Family Island. At Ron's Electric Motors, they repair and rewind all major brands of electric motors, including water pumps, generators, and generators back end, welding machines, electric lifts, air compressors, battery chargers, and more. They equipped to handle up to 850 kilowatts and rewind up to 450 horsepower motors. They're conveniently located on the corner of Wolf and Clarence Roads and are open weekdays, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturdays till noon. They offer 24 hours emergency assistance. You can reach them at 242-356-0249. You've tried everything. Asus with your mother's cousin, sister's auntie, and even hiding your money under your mattress. But is your money safe? Your Bahamian dollar deposit in a member bank or credit union is insured up to $50,000. If anything happens, your deposit up to the insured value will be returned to you thanks to deposit insurance. Visit Deposit Insurance Corporation at www.dic.bs. Protection for your money, guaranteed with DIC. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Revolution here on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. The advanced poll is going on, so we can't talk. A- the advanced poll is going on, and we're prohibited from talking about what's going on with the advanced poll. Like, I don't have the, the energy to mount a challenge to that particular rule um, in the code of pra- in ERCA's code of practice, but I really don't get it. Because all I want to talk about is what's going on, particularly after listening to the news. But we can't talk about it, so we're going to talk other things. We're going to talk a bit of sports. Let's do another pick. We got Denver at the Giants at New York. Denver at New York. Uh, l- listen. 
something's wrong with the New York Giants. Like something, like maybe someone like put some voodoo on them. So, something's wrong because on paper, this should all work really well. Okay. On paper, this should work good. Okay. You, you got a lot going on, but I'm going to go with the Broncos because something's just not clicking uh, with you guys. Since can we talk about American politics? I ain't an American people business. That, that, you, know, I, you know, I had something to say when Trump freaked out. That was like a world event. So I'm just, but otherwise, y'all, please. Good afternoon. Well, I do monitor American politics, but good afternoon. But this is about the Bahamas. Their politics matters in terms of what happens with us policy wise. But, you know, I, the, the minutia of it that these guys go on and on about, like this liberal and, 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 and conservative, like culture war that's going on. Cause that's all I see it a, a, being about is like culture. I don't, I don't see any of them being firmly rooted in like policy. That really uh, shifts the game. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to the revolution. How you doing, Mr. McGarney? I'm great. How's it going? All right, let's, let's talk a little culture then. Okay. If it's possible. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know that, that piece of property next to that opposite Jonkalo Beach next to the hotel? Uh, I think it's a vacant piece of property. I think I know what you're talking about. Uh, what's that hotel name across from Jonkalo Beach, the big one? The big, uh, like, orange one? Yeah, yeah. The big, I, big I don't one. know the name of it. I don't know the name I of it. I can't remember myself. Yeah. But anyway, there's a property right next to there that probably can be developed to culture lane or culture's way. Probably build it, probably put six or seven stories, restaurants, museum, Bahamian museum. All the Bahamian music can be stored here. Have different uh, uh, clubs playing Bahamian music live shows. And um, I, I, I picked that because I think it's good for policing. Because mm. from you can have it where you come in one way and exit the next way, and it can be policed properly. Now you're... And I think it can be something magnificent right there. Because there's way the tourists can get to it. Uh, you get fish fry across the road. Mm -hmm. You come over and have great entertainment. And bang. Now, are you talking about the property next to the courtyard Marriott or the property? Yes, yes, yes. In between. Oh, okay. The, 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 the it's Marriott. It's owned by Bank of the Bahamas. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. That's the name Culture's Way, man. You have great restaurants. You got to have every island represented with great chefs. You have tasting. You have authentic beam and craft there. Yeah, sounds good. It, it'd be something great. Uh, you know, also I texted you the other day about a new hospital could be built. Probably, you know, you know, Prospect Ridge deer around the lake. But that 28 stories, man. And yeah. let, let the behemoth have shares and, and that's a beautiful building. Have a hospital right there. You have Carmichael Road, can reach the airport west, and you have a great hospital right there. Yeah, I, I think they should definitely have a hospital nearer to uh, the southwest area of New Providence, too. Man, when you, when you consider what uh, you have those guys have that great building right there, that'll be another, that'll be like our Twin Tower in Nassau. You know them using set across the road, those guys. Yep, I agree. Yep. I agree. Yep, good idea. Thank you, my brother. I'm, I support that. We'll do one more pick, and then we're going to talk about the Bahamian serial killer, or whatever else you want to talk about. Uh, Cleveland Browns at Kansas City Chiefs. I'm gonna be real with you. I think Kansas City is going to the Super Bowl, and the Browns sure ain't going to beat them this weekend. That's what I think. I think I think Kansas City is going to come out on top of the AFC, certainly. Green Bay at, sorry, one more, at New Orleans. Oh, that's be nice to talk about that. Green Bay is going to win. That's, that's a no-brainer. What happened? Because of the hurricane? 
Because the hurricane, you think they're going to be energized? <laughs> you think Dag is top any Green Bay Packers? You think Aaron Rodgers worrying about they got hurricane? <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go to the phone line. Good afternoon. Welcome to the revolution. Hello, good afternoon. Hey, how's it going? I'm okay, you know. All right. I think Cleveland may end up beating Kansas City this weekend, believe it or not. Boy, what makes you think that? Cleveland coming back strong. You forget, hey, they went far last year, you know. And they Cleveland was, was... They was missing somebody. They at Cleveland improving, right? But I don't know, man. I, I don't... You I might... You maybe. Over, you should pick the Giants to win. Yeah? Yeah, you should pick the Giants to win because... They have they have them predicted to go to the playoffs. The Giants predicted the Giants have everything together, right? But they fall apart. The Giants ain't never lack for talent. What you think about Washington Redskins? The Red Washington football team, you mean? Washington <laughs> football, sorry. Um yeah. who they playing? The Chargers? That's right. And everyone predict the Chargers to be uh I mean I think playoff. Yeah, I think the, I think the Chargers are looking good. Washington ain't looking that good. Now, if you ask me about the 49ers, I think the 49ers are looking like playoff material. Yeah. Uh, at least you made one good pick. How was that? Which one is that? You know which one that is. The Dolphins. Oh, wait, you know. You know. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, you know, I want I I I, I ain't on y'all run, right? But I can't yeah. deny reality. You better jump on the wave, yeah, before you get lit. Oh, that's not going to happen. Huh? <laughs> not, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> okay. All right. Make sure we play you all then. Okay. All right. We shall see. Yeah, man. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Bye. A couple, people, a couple people pick at Cleveland. And that text says Cleveland. Yeah. Two, two of these texts say Cleveland. You think so? Who are you picking? Kansas City or Cleveland? Kansas City? I go with Kansas City. I hear you. Cleveland was looking good last season. And they're getting better. But Kansas City looks dynamite. All right. Let me do your text messages. Then we'll talk about the serial killer. Want no political talk today? Can't talk about it and why? Just makes sense. Can you name another country in this world today that bans talking about anything or intimidated by any influences on election day? And should we continue this law, trend, or policy? Please speak clearly and fairly to this. Thanks. I don't know of any country. Uh, there may be uh, other countries that do this. I don't know who they are. Uh, I don't understand how this makes any sense. Like, what are we, like the guy said, what are you, what are you listening to the radio? Uh, while you're on the on the line and you're trying to figure out what's going on and, and, and Juan's going to help you make that determination? Are you, are you like at home? And you go, oh, well, McCartney says, so let me go hop up and go vote. It doesn't make any sense to me. Juan, Dolphins will win this year. Dolphins, Dolphins. Uh-huh. Nah, don't mess up because I can be here to talk bad about you. Says Miami playing KC this season for the AFC title. Remember where you saw it first. It's a bold, it's a bold statement. <laughs> it's a bold statement. Juan, well, since Irka is preventing you from talking about the advanced polling, let's talk about Irka and their restrictions. Why they try to, trying to muzzle the people? Some of the Irka restrictions around uh, political advertising and um, programming, I do agree with. All right. But I don't understand why the talk shows are prevented. I, I I don't have a rational reason why that why that's the way it is. Also, shout out to uh, the people out there in Grand Bahama. Someone sent me a video. One of the reporters sent me a video of uh, a lady in Grand Bahama saying they listen to, to myself and Nahaja every day. <laughs> shout out to to Grand Bahama. Hope you're doing well. I see Kyle, like Kyle Joaquin, like picked the beef with, with all of Grand Bahama on, on Twitter. Talking about, say, what do you say? Uh, is it just me or people 
Only people from Grand Bahama don't know how to use roundabouts. I know what he did that for. Everybody on Twitter from Grand Bahama jumped on him. Plus, you know, Nassau people can't talk about nobody else driving. This We have the worst drivers on the planet. By by far. It says, one, I think France stops political talk on media two to three days before elections as well. Oh, possibly. I don't I don't I don't keep up too much with 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 French politics other than what makes world news. One, I personally like that we can't talk politics on election days because it makes the day feel more peaceful and highlights that despite all our rhetoric, we have free and fair elections with the majority of voters usually turning out to vote. I'm not saying it makes sense. I just like it. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about the serial killer. Because the other day when they killed six people, I said to myself, that must be, that must be a record. But apparently, I found out, Travis said, it's not. All right? There was a event in 1964 where six people were murdered and six people were wounded. And then the gunman killed himself. So this is Bahamianology.com. It's a really good website. I don't know who publishes it. Don't get mad at me, but it is on the web. I'm attributing you. I know how y'all go. Go on Facebook and, and start cussing me. I'm just reading from your website. That is totally free. On Wednesday, May 20th, 1964, around 7 p.m. or so in the evening, somewhere in Over the Hill, Nassau, Reuben Roll, a 30-year-old Negro carpenter, was loading his shotgun. Over the hill, characterized by hut-like clapboard houses, was the traditionally poor, Negro-populated area near the city limits of Nassau. It had been that way since the early 1800s, when it was settled by liberated Africans and emancipated slaves. Reuben Roll was angry, fed up with the world, and apparently tired of living. One thing we undoubtedly know about the, man, the, the mind of the man that night, Roll was certainly tired of his wife. Staying alive. Reuben and Alois Roll had not been getting on well. Their marriage seemed to have been irretrievably broken. In fact, Alois had moved out of their house to live with her sister just a week or so before May 20th. Reuben Roll had been very upset over these turn of events. Before the end of the day on May 20th, 1964, Reuben Roll would become a famous man. He would become the very first spree killer in Bahamian crime history. Believe it or not, there are very distinct differences between mass murders, serial killers, and spree killers. Serial killers kill people over long periods of time. They're often quite hard to catch. Mass murder is the act of murdering a number of people, typically simultaneously, or over a relatively short period of time and in close geographic proximity. The FBI in the United States defines mass murder as murdering four or more persons during a criminal event with no cooling off period between the murders. Then we have spree killers. Spree killers are those who kill at two or more locations with almost no time break between murders. It doesn't matter how many people they kill. What is more important is that it can be spontaneous or premeditated. The killer moves quickly in order to increase the fatality count. They're often angry, delusional but most of all, deadly. The first person Reuben Roll killed was his wife. Reuben borrowed a friend's automobile, walking through the streets of Over the Hill with a loaded 16-bore shotgun, would have certainly drawn attention. Roll wanted to make sure that he had enough time to do everything he had in mind to accomplish that evening. Roll drove to Broom Street and parked out front of a small wooden house. It was the house of his sister-in-law, Winifred Ferguson. He got out of the car and called to his wife, Elois. Is it Elois or Eloise? Anyway. The darkness of 8 o'clock in the early evening hid the shotgun from easy view. For surely, had his wife noticed the long gun, she would have tried to flee her fate. As soon as, Elo 
Elois drew close. Ruben fired three times. She never had a chance. The first shot killed her for sure, but Ruben wanted to make certain. He fired the shotgun two more times in rapid succession. Loud booms which followed the pull of the trigger drew people's attention from tiny houses which dotted Broom Street. Those who were just hanging about on the street moved toward the unmistakable sound. Eloise's sister, Winifred Ferguson, ran to the body as it lay motionless on the dirt road. Reuben fired the shotgun at her as well. Ferguson was blown back toward the wooden porch of the house. No one dared approach the man with the smoking gun as he got back into the borrowed car. Reuben Roll had more death to visit upon more unsuspecting inhabitants of over the hill. He reloaded as he drove. There was a group of men and boys standing on a corner near the entrance of a bar. Reuben spotted them as he drove by. He got out of the car quickly. Reuben fired the shotgun so quickly toward the unsuspecting group that it seems as if they didn't even have a chance to run. Eric Strawn was shot. Carlton Sweeting, 14 years old, was also shot. William Fernander who sold ice cream, was shot. He died two hours after being admitted to Princess Margaret Hospital that night. Bursal Fowler was shot. Lodum Woodside was shot. He died before the sun came up the next day, which was a Thursday. And then there was the hero Alfred Glinton. The youngest person shot was Betty Sweeting. Little Betty Sweeting was two years old. Betty survived the murderous rampage because of a man named Alfred Glinton, the hero of that day. Glinton took two-year-old Betty and others who had been shot to hospital. He put them all in his car and drove to Princess Margaret Hospital as fast as he could. But the shock of seeing so many shot down in the street, bleeding and crying in pain, was too much for Alfred. Alfred collapsed before he was able to get out of the car once he reached the hospital with the injured. A heart attack tore through the chest of this good Samaritan. Alfred Glinton died, sitting behind the wheel of his car. So much had happened so fast that by the time the police had been marshaled, it was more like a comedy. A two-mile area had been cordoned off around over the hill. Reuben Roll had nowhere to escape. Blue Hill Road to Nassau Street to Augusta Street to Shirley to Bay Street had police on the corners waiting to spot the car. And the man, the first spree killer in Bahamian history, to happen by. It's unclear how long the police waited. But in any event, their wait was in vain. At some point, Reuben got tired of shooting people. He was probably out of cartridges for his shotgun. While the police were all over the Negro areas looking for him, Reuben Roll went home. He saved one cartridge, however, for himself. Roll loaded the shotgun one last time, put the muzzle to his chest, and pulled the trigger. Did any of you know about that? That that happened? Did you know about that? That someone went on a killing spree in 1964 in Over the Hill? You did? I didn't know about that until Travis told me. It says, Man One, you remember the brother and sister were menacing Bahamians? They used to tie up people in their houses and torture them? Yep, I do remember that. It says, from Grand Bahama, there's a million posters all over the place. All that is advertising on election day. They need to take them down till after the election. All that is a form of influence. Juan, well, maybe I tune in late, but my team Chicago Bears and Fields, our QB, is the highlight of this season. Super Bowl bound after we beat Green Bay, that is. Boy, the Bears look good. I ain't going to lie. Green Bay looks really good. All right. And have consistently been looking good. It says, muzzling the people and censoring them is the same. A free, unconformed mind is a true free society, free from mass and group psychology. I'm with you. It says, Juan, D.C. and Paris have horrible drivers, too. Afternoon, bro. The Dolphins will suck, as usual. Believe that. This is the first time I'm hearing about the 1962 murders. 64, 64 murders. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to the revolution. Yes, good afternoon. Hello. Yes, hello. Turn your radio down for me. Hey, I just got it on. How you doing, man? Hey, I'm good. How's it going? You all right? Nice to hear you talking with this. And then you know you wasn't even born. I wasn't even born. I didn't even you know, I didn't know that even happened. Born. I was living on Madera Street at the time. Really? I remember that. that was, I think that was a Saturday night. I can't remember. 
But I remember the, I was on the Dallas Street and something went around town. And somehow the news got around because I remember my mother coming home and saying, everybody get inside the house. Because there's a crazy man going around shooting and killing everybody up and down each street. So, you know, over there, street by Centerville Grocery Store, and that's far from each street. Right. That was a Wednesday. A Wednesday. And now uh, everybody I remember was, was going inside, locking up. Some people were jumping in their cars, headed towards the area because they wanted to see the job. They had to like, go see drama. If the fire end didn't go in, everybody go follow the fire end to see where the fire is. If somebody got all get killed and shoot like they won't see what the accident is, so but you missed out some things. There's also something called the fountain of youth. The bar down on East Street South. I guess East Street South, you might hear that, but the fountain of youth. Yeah, yeah, I remember the fountain of youth very well. Yeah, inside that story also they said Ruben Rule went into the fountain of youth. And he was looking for somebody inside there to take them out. Really? And somebody they said went into the bathroom and tried to flush themselves. And <laughs> there was a okay. little drama. Other than that, wait, well, look at Morgan, you gotta, gotta find some drama. There's one time they called what fella called the Greasy Man. Mm. That was Roman around between McCullough Corner, round in the back there by Evangelistic Club, but they had the, the big wall and all that kind of thing. And they said this man used to pack himself up with grease. So when the police try to catch him, he would slip away, and then he to walk around naked and rape and, and fool with little ladies in the night. So you got to follow up on the story with the greasy man too. The greasy man is this a real a person, person or is this like a is that folklore? Mice Nemo. Mice Nemo. He said he used to always get away from prison round round before round Christmas, mm -hmm. and he used to go all over the place doing all kind of things. And then he used to turn himself in Christmas night after Chocolate. Wow. He used to, he used to get away and then turn himself in until next Christmas. Go on a crime spree in Christmas. And do it again. Wow. <laughs> it Ellen nice, Ellen nice, the ball, the greasy man, and then Ruben Lowe. Boy, look at that. Maybe it's up used to have them stories. Wow. And I know what we were talking about, about Ruben Lowe, but some things messing up with that. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, my brother. I appreciate it. The what? Yeah? Paul's Alley murder? How many people is that? You know, how many people? I don't know about that one. This says, uh, someone's telling me that they were, says, I know the story well. I was 17 days old. My mother said I hollered the whole night. She said they came from my father, a policeman, to work that night, and I would not shut up. Our neighbor hollered to her to make me shut up because, quote, roll coming to get us. News spread like wildfire. No WhatsApp, not even telephones. Wow. That's crazy. Let's go to the phone line. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to the revolution. Yeah, good day again, uh, Juan. Hey, how's it going? Juan, uh, I, I, I remember that situation situation as plain as day. Really? Not only that, I know the man. I was a youngster then, right? In my teens. And he used to do mason work, right? And my daddy, him and my daddy used to work together, right? Because mm -hmm. my daddy was a builder, you see? But that I was living, we were living on Broom Street at that time, right? And I was standing right in our front door when somebody came and said, that the, the uh, ice cream man got shot. And when they said who it was, I couldn't believe it because he was a fine gentleman. You know what I'm saying? The ice cream guy or Ruben Roll? Ruben Roll. Oh, really? Yeah, man. He was a decent gentleman. He was living through Anderson Street, you know, right right off East Street there, off Mason's Edition, called for Mason's Edition. Wow. And it, it alleged that he, he went around shooting up people like like you had said, right? And he went in the fountain of youth. And, and we had a guy who used to be around. He, we used to call him Shorty because he, he was real short. He was a midget. And that's why Sparky said he tried to flush himself. But that was the talk also. But what he really had done, uh, he put some money in the dude box, and it was said that he sat 
he played the song, what, so, what kind of fool do you think I am? Really? Yeah, it seems as if so he was having problems. Yeah, I'd say he was having problems, no yeah. doubt. Yeah. It, but when I hear that, I couldn't believe he was that type of person. I, I don't know how you murder six people. If you just want to kill yourself, that's one thing. It says his daughter is a famous Bahamian singer who told me of the murder of her mother. Wow. Maybe she is. Who's. Anyway. It says man won after hearing the 1964. The account of the 1964 murders, it sounds like those over the hill Negroes, were dangerous. It says, Juan, there was a mass murder in Montel, Montel Heights. Ask about it. When was that? It says, my mom and dad always told us the story about Reuben Roll. They also said he went into a bar room, punched a song in the jukebox called What Kind of Fool Do You Think I Am by the Tams. He then shot his friend. Wow. Yeah, that's what Brayman was just saying. That's crazy, eh? Jesus. Good afternoon. Welcome to the revolution. Yeah, bless up, Mr. McCartney. Hey, what's happening, my brother? Yeah, I, boy, I was enjoying those, uh, st that, that story. Mm -hmm. It's crazy, Yeah, right? listen, yeah, but you know, uh, I, I don't know if, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Paul Thompson, the former commissioner, yeah. at the time, the story which you talk about, uh -huh. my mom would have been a young police, right? So, I was, even if he didn't know, I wouldn't have, I was born in 64, so I, I caught up in this paradigm between baby boom and Generation X. That's the only year where they say you could lean on either side, mm -hmm. Generation X or baby boomers. I don't like the term X because X means unknown in March, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm known. So, uh, yeah, and, but it's a story that took place in the South. It's one of those uh, Southern islands. Mm -hmm. This would have been late 1950s, and this was when the police used to do the defense force job. And there was a shootout. Uh, concerning the Cubans on one of those remote keys, heising the Cuban flag and etc. And so, uh, Mr. Paul Thompson, he should be able to, somebody who's older than him around his age should be able to, to give the story about the, the uh, military conflict between the Cubans and the Bahamian police force on this key. But I, I read it years ago, so I really, I'm not too, uh, I'm vague on the, mem the memories of it, but if anybody do know about that story, it's very interesting. Yeah, it is. It's, yeah, bless it's up. Amazing. A lot of people don't know about it, you know, but I just came across it in my, labyrinthic reading like I always do. I'm a bless up. Thanks, thanks yeah. my brother. Yeah, I, I had no idea until Travis said something. Good afternoon. Welcome Good to the Revolution. Hey, my brother, what's happening? Yeah, can I give you a recommendation for the 16th? Sure. Uh, seeing that Urko regulates anything that broadcasts on the open airways, how about the Guardian Radio going to a, uh, a internet platform for that day so you could do a full commentary? What Talk about what? You know, Dave, you can do a full blow-by-blow -blow commentary use, utilizing anything except the on the ways. Maybe you guys should voice into a internet platform, digital platform. Yeah, that'd be nice, but we ain't going to set that up by... <laughs> oh, no, you are, man. You just, what you need is a camera and a connection to high-speed internet, which is in your building. You already live stream to our news, so that means you already have the capability. Just that don't plug in the radio station part of it. Well, that's, a, that's an idea. Okay, just... Just saying, but uh, what we could do, uh, and 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 then on the radio part, you could say, okay, but you all want a blow by blow of politics, and for those of you all who want to understand what you're going to do in the new the new business frontier, then we could talk about these colored economies and digital and conceptual and everything else on how to prepare. Because in, in, in essence, regardless who wins the next election, we're going to have to grow our way out of this. When you see the demands for the unions that other people are making, and the economy has already been uh, reduced. The only thing we're going to have to have out of an austerity message is some rapid uh, 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 economic growth. And one of the greatest assets there is the fact that we have embraced the digital economy, the big D, and the sub-digital and with these colors could be a unique way for us to basically have a debate now after the election to say what is the steps we're going to take and how are we going to hold whoever wins accountable in driving that economic growth. Yeah, good point, okay. good point. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, my brother. You could, we could, you know, definitely discuss those things and do a more, you know, structured show for Election Day. I'll probably have a guest on Election Day that's not going to talk about the actual election. We could talk about other issues that are going on. Someone's asked me to talk about the issue of homelessness and uh, mental illness in the Bahamas. 
And that's something we can talk about then as well, because I do have a great uh, <sighs> there's two things, right? When I see homeless people, mentally ill people, I'm struck by two emotions. And, you know, I'm just going to be candid about it. My first feeling is that I don't want to see it. And I don't want my kids to see it or be around it or be bothered by it. And my other feeling that happens simultaneously, is my heart breaks for these people. And they need help. And it's a problem that's too large and complex for any one individual or organization to deal with. It's something you're going to have to be intentional about as a society in order to shift it, all right? It's a growing problem that's creeping along the new providence, and we've got to start trying to identify what is happening, why these people are becoming disconnected from the rest of society, why we allow people to be homeless, become vagrants, why we allow people to also harass members of society and we just try to turn a blind eye toward it. So it's going to take some real thought and real work in order for those of you who feel like me, who don't want to see it, and in order for those of you who also feel like me, who feel as though these people really should get help. Someone should help them. I'm willing to help, but I can't do it by myself. We got a, let's do a phone call. I'm going to do a break. Good afternoon. Welcome to the revolution. Listen, man, you see what I On you what? <laughs> Is that Sparky? Did he, did, did he pocket dial us? <laughs> I should have, I should have kept him on the lot, but I don't, I don't, I don't want any darkness <laughs> To bleed through, you know what I'm saying? It says, hey, Juan, there was a mass shooting through Quarry Mission Road off Nassau Street in the mid-90s. I'm sure at least four to six died, and more than ten were shot. Wow. I don't know about that one. Someone sent me a link. Hey, Juan, was the song Stagger Lee by Gino D about that story? Was that a true account? Some of my father told me Staggerly was real. So <laughs> I don't know if he was messing with me or or what, but he told me it's a true story. Uh, good afternoon, welcome to the revolution. Hey, hey, I'm very sorry to call back, but I heard the Staggerly thing. I heard when my my grand, my my father told me that was a real story too. Yeah. But you know what I? But then you talk about the fair, but us and our children seeing things. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when I watch world news and. We talk about these terrorists and things like that, then they just go berserk sometimes around the world with all these different religions and would be called terrorists. Mm-hmm. I am afraid one day because of how our country, how our leaders sometimes treat people in our country like they are nothing, that somebody, whether it be Muslim or whatever, they be berserk with one of these AK-47, just get teed off one night and just go someplace in a crowded nightclub and just spread. One, I, I play sometimes and I watch what's going on in France, what's going on in this, different countries and stuff. When these terrorists, or, or whatever they call them, um, when they just let loose. Like the little boy in, 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 in America when they go into school because he was mad at something and killed hundreds of dog children. You, you, you understand that story? I, 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 I haven't heard the one where hundreds of people were killed. That's that whatever happened in our country where somebody just loses because politicians and everything just get people to the point where they can't even find food no more for their wives, family, and children. And one fella just give up one day and say, I can just take out a 
All right. Well, if you got that problem, then you need to just take yourself out and don't worry about the rest of us. We'll sort everything out uh, after you're gone. Stag- Stagger Lee can be about that. Stagger Lee only killed Billy. Right? He shot Billy because Billy said he. He threw seven and I swore he threw eight. Right. Stagger Lee threw seven. Billy said it was eight. And then Billy got all of Stagger Lee's money and his, his brand new Stetson hat. And Staggerly went home and got his gun, said, I'm going to go pay that debt I owe. And he shot Billy, and Billy was like, I got three kids and a wife. And Staggerly shot him. All right, let's go to a break. We'll be right back. Throughout our lifetime, we must all make decisions. No matter how we choose, the right one just needs to be made. Like having J.S. Johnson Insurance Agents and Brokers as your insurance partner. We've been serving the Bahamas for over 100 years. Whether you need home, motor, marine, or commercial insurance, make the right decision. Call 397-2100 or visit jsjohnson.com. J.S.C., 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 J.S. Johnson Insurance. Always on the go? Miss the show? You can now listen to Guardian Radio talk shows anytime, anywhere on Spotify and YouTube by searching Guardian Radio 96.9 FM or by entering the name of your favorite show. You can also listen by logging on to GuardianTalkRadio.com and clicking on the podcast tab. Guardian Radio, continuing to provide you with fresh news and smart talk anywhere, anytime, all day. This is Guardian Radio. Your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. I was standing on the corner when I heard my bulldog bark. He was barking at the two men who were gambling in the dark. It was staggering. Staggerly, yeah? He killed Billy. It was couldn't have been about Ruben Roll. My father told me it was real. I, I think he might have been messing with me. This says, um... oh, okay. It says, Staggerly is about the murder of Billy Lyons in St. Louis, Missouri, Christmas 1895. Stag Lee Shelton was a murderer. Wow. You see what happens when we all put our minds together? <laughs> and we come, and we, every, every, and we, and we, and we all give input. We, we start to understand things. I did not know that. I did not know about Ruben Roll, and I didn't know about, uh, uh, Stagger Lee. That's the first time anyone's ever told me that. I thought it happened like over the hill. Uh, <laughs> you know, like in the 1920s. If you're wearing a, a, a hat, right? When did we stop wearing hats? Like in the 40s? 50s. 50s. My grandfather never stopped wearing a hat. You go to church, have his hat on, boy. Suit? Sharp. Son. Immaculate. Says, oh, hold on. Staggerly was written by Neil Diamond. Was it? I like Neil Diamond. This says Staggerly's an American song. <laughs> this is really sparky. Juan, did you see those lines? I can't talk about it. I can't talk about it. it says the Montel Heights murder was 2019 at a baby shower drive by. I think I remember that, which speaks very poorly of our society that I uh, don't immediately don't have recollection of that. 
It says, what about the boys in Grand Bahama? I was going to talk about the boys in Grand Bahama, but I think that that may be too fresh still, even though it happened quite a number of years ago, for the families of, of those boys. I don't know how you get over that, right? A, I don't know how you get over your child dying. B, I can't. How do you get over someone murdering your child? It says, yes, one, Ruben Roll, I thought he lived in Ridgeland Park. It says, hi, one, I was 14 years old when that happened. I remember that I was still in Long Island. Sparky was right. It was at the Fountain of Youth. I didn't know that. I remember the Fountain of Youth. They had really good food. Uh, Fountain of Youth still there, eh? I think so. Just Fountain of Youth in back of Ridgeland Park, right? <laughs> you don't know. On East Street, you never been in a Fountain of Youth? You never had food from the Fountain of Youth. You were here in the 90s, right? And you never had food from the Fountain of Youth. Not never. With your, with your old man being so deep in politics and all this stuff like that. Wow. Where? Rudy's? Rudy's. Rudy's. I don't know about Rudy's. You know about Three Queens? Yeah, Three Queens. That's my old man used to get food from there. This says, hi, one. The butcher was a serial killer with 15 victims. The butcher? Says, you need to talk tomorrow about the only known political murder in the Bahamas at Purpal Track. I got to look that one up. It says, sorry, it's Robert Hunter sang by Neem da- Robert Robert Hunter wrote Stagger Lee. Neil Diamond sang it. it. says, that's the good that happens when people can't argue and talk about politics and meeting of the minds. <laughs> yeah, we, we accomplished great things together. We figured out Stagger Lee. We added components to the story of Ruben Roll. All right. It says, Stagger Lee was not written by Neil Diamond. It was first recorded in 1923 by the Pennsylvanians, first published in 1911. Wow. What about the Don Nottage estate murder of parents by a teenager? Yes. And we could talk about that. I believe he's still alive. It says, I never heard about Reuben Roll. And my, my mother grew up over the hill in Grantstown. It says, amazing story on the son of Bursell Fowler. Remember that day? I was nine. Wow. Wow. It says, the butcher is still alive and in prison. The butcher was the guy who, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to look this up, actually. He worked at a food store, right? And how did, they, they caught him because the common trend of the victims, I believe, was they went to the food store to go to the book. So I think he would go to the food store. He would be at work and someone would come in. I'm going to look it up so I can get all the details. And then he would, at night, go out and track the person down and, and, and kill him. Cyril Darvel. Yeah, I'm going to look that up. says, Juan Montel Heights was about a bad love situation and rejection gone bad. It was not no drive-by. I remember a, a Montel Heights where several people were killed, but I, I don't remember a drive-by. But, again, it says, what time did the bars open? Bars open when the polls close, so six. I'm going to look that up, the butcher. We don't have time today. It says, yes, the Don Ottage murderer is still alive, as is Cordell Farrington. says, Juan, the Ruben Roll murders were investigated by Mr. Paul Thompson, Assistant Commissioner of Police. He's still alive. He is still alive. Yep. says, what about the young man from Long Island, March 2020, who killed his aunt and cousin, allegedly admitted to killing another elderly man in his settlement prior to, by setting his house on fire. Well, that's still before the court, so we can't talk about that. Well, that's allegedly he killed the aunt and cousin. Can you believe it's 2021 and our CDU still doesn't have the materials to sweep for fingerprints? Yeah, man. See, you sweeps for fingerprints. I've seen it done many times. It says, I remember the butcher. He was arrested by CID under Mr. Bullard. 
I remember hearing about these things when I was when I was a child. Hey, Juan, will the IRCA embargo extend into tomorrow since the advance poll in Barbados has moved to Friday? No, they own their own in Barbados. It says, Juan, this inviting people out to have dinner with you to a restaurant is a growing trend now. And to top it off, these people have gift selection at these expensive stores. So I have to spend money to eat with you and buy you a gift? What? It's only one or the other. Did everybody pay for themselves? I think that's fine. Since I came across videos on Facebook with soft white underbelly, those interviews, OMG, listening to some of those stories, people really experienced some things. Yep. Do you think all that was called for to just explain about your show name? All you guys allowing these shows to get the y'all head. Humble yourself. You humble yourself, anonymous texter. It says, Juan, today, can you address the issue of homelessness and mental illness? At one point, we had been walking the streets of Grand Bahama, and now that's increased. And now I personally see over five women doing the same. I've loaned a generator to an entire fourplex for the past six months and maintain it, but the fuel is shared among tenants. For all purposes, this place, the owner has left the island for work and the tenants rarely pay rent. The economics has also reached crisis mode. Mothers hinting that I can date their minor daughters to try to get leverage or funds to buy food. The country needs to address the mental and economic crisis that's on us now. This is not, not on its way. Daily, I also have mothers who see me and try to get themselves or sons jobs with me. I have three working with me and have to bid jobs at absolute cost just to ensure I can rotate them for three to four days each at $60 per day. Hopefully after elections, you can extend your discussion on these issues. Wow. That's deep. You got to go? Still got more. Connect. Can we talk about doing away with these antiquated Sharia laws and insulting rules that we cling to? No talking politics on election day. Women having to cover their arms to enter government offices. Anyone other than the customs controller writing with green ink, dipping your thumb in ink, etc. The system is demeaning and degrading, but it is working just as the creators intended. Keep them dumb, distracted, and divided, and dependent. All right, we got to go. We'll be back tomorrow, and we certainly will talk some politics. You guys take care out there. Have a great day, Bahamas.